In this video, we are going to learn about Azure Storage Services. So how many types of storage services Azure provides? The answer is five different storage services. And what are those? The first one is Azure Blobs, Azure Files, Azure Queues, Azure Disks, and Azure Tables. Once again, Blobs, Files, Queues, Disks, and Tables. The very first storage services is Azure Blob. Now, what is the meaning of Blob? B-L-O-B, Blob, stands for Binary Large Object. What it is? B stands for Binary, L stands for Large, and OB stands for Object, Binary Large Object. Binary means 0, 1. Our digital data is a binary data, right? So, large object. Azure Blob, we understood the full form. Now, the next question is, what is the benefit of using Blob? This is used for storing large amount of unstructured data. Large amount of unstructured data. For example, what are the examples of large amount of unstructured data? For example, your videos. Right? For example, you wanted to store huge amount of videos or recordings or things like that. So for that, you need Azure Blob, binary large object. Log files. Every time a system is running, it is generating huge amount of log files. Images. So these are all unstructured data. You getting it? Any kind of a data. Images, audios, etc. So these are the unstructured data. So what is the key point? For storing large amount of unstructured data. When it comes to unstructured data, what you have to think of? Think of videos, think of audios, think of images, think of log files, okay, etc. Now, there is no restriction on the kind or type of data that you can store. You can only store Excel files. You can only store uh, zipped files. There is no such restrictions. You can only store .mp4. There is no such restrictions. There is no restriction on the kind or type of data that you can store in the Azure Blob. This is one of the important property. Blob can contain gigabytes of binary data or digital data. These are the few properties of Azure Blob. How you can access the Blob storage? So the users can access and your applications, the application that requires the data, right, to show the data in the application. So these they can access via here are the different methods. They can access the data using URLs. They can access the data using Azure Storage REST APIs. Using APIs also, we can access the data. We can access the data using PowerShell. The user and applications can access the data using command line interface of CLI. What are URLs? Using direct links, you can access them. REST API, the API endpoints, you can access it using PowerShell, using command line interface. The fifth way to access the blob storage data is by Azure Storage Client Library. Now, this is a new one, which we would see it later. And this storage client library available for multiple languages, including .NET, Java, Node.js, Python, PHP, Ruby, etc. When you have stored data, do you access all your data, for example, on your computer every day? You may be having gigabytes of data. Do you access all the files every day? No. So there is always a need. Based on the need, you access a certain data. You don't visit all your data, correct? Similar way, in Azure, when you store data, there is something called Azure Storage Access Tires. Access Tires means based on your need, you access them. Okay. So there are four types of Azure Storage Access Tires. So what is this Azure Storage Access Tire? So remember, some data, for example, imagine you have a website for your customers. Some data are accessed actively. For example, your website has few images of your products. Now, can you take those images down after a month? You might upload new ones, but that's okay. But your image, your, uh, uh, your, your logo and those things, will you be taking it down? 
after a month or so no mostly no so any data that you access it you know you you are accessing the data actively your home page your uh, images these are actively every time you open your website those are there they are those data are accessed actively and there are data which are periodically accessed periodically accessed for example uh, invoices sometimes the customer would go and access the invoice right not every time periodically um, sometimes uh, for example I, you would like to download a report or xyz sometimes you do it rarely let's say last 5 years data would you start opening and uh, no rarely used some very rarely so there are categories of ways how you access your data so this is only called azure storage access tiers so there are four categories and why it is there to balance your storage cost with access needs if you are not actively using why you should pay the same amount correct no so there are four different options one is called hot access tier second one is called cool access tier third one is called cold cool and co cold see hot cool cold and then the last one is called archive access tiers so if i ask you a question how many types of azure storage access tiers are available and what are those you say there are four answers are hot access tier cold cool access tier cold access tier and archive access tier now let's see what is hot access tier hot access tier are those data which are actively accessed for example images of your website so those things you would keep them in the hot access tier every time you are trying to access that your application is using the data cool access tier data that is periodically or infrequently accessed okay for example invoices customers invoices so these are stored for at least 30 days remember there is a retention period called 30 days in the storage next one is cold access tier cool and cold cold means what you are rarely you are accessing it so data that access sometimes or rarely when you access it you know sometimes that becomes you know like reports you access sometime you not you you may or may not depends okay i just gave an example so things that you access sometimes and the retention period for that is 90 days so the data will be there for 90 days and the fourth one is called archive access tier now these are the your old data data that is rarely accessed so it has a stored retention of 180 days remember 30 days 90 days 180 days hot cool cold archive with flexible latency requirement for example i want to keep it for one year i want to keep it for 365 days it's up to you you can uh, it's flexible to select your own latency needs the second storage service type is called azure files now what is azure files imagine a network drive it is more like a network drive service where you can store and access files from various devices over the internet like you have many uh, like microsoft has one drive you might have heard about right so it is more like a network drive service where you can store and access files from various devices now when it comes to accessing the files from a network drive there are two protocols which are used two protocols are used for sharing files over the internet or accessing files over the internet what are those two protocols one is called smb so if i ask you what are the two protocols used for uh, azure files for example so the answer is smb server message block and the second one is called nfs network file system once again what are the two protocols smb server message block nfs network file system now what is smb and nfs smb azure is a protocol okay how the data passes on the internet smb azure files can be accessed from windows linux and mac os devices let's say i have a apple mac a laptop i have a linux laptop i have a windows laptop so on different different devices on different different operating system i can access smb so file sharing protocol so you if a file is using smb protocol that means those files can be accessed on windows devices linux devices mac os devices 
Now let's say the files are stored using NFS, network file system. In that case, NFS is mostly for Linux. So those kind of files which is using NFS protocol, it can be accessed on Linux and Mac OS, not Windows. So if question comes, uh, the file Azure files are using NFS, which device type on the file cannot be accessed? So Windows. Which device types where it can be accessed? Linux and Mac OS. If I'm using SMB Azure files, which device types I can access? Checkbox. So you should check Windows, Linux. You're getting it? So you can think of various types of question looking at this important pointers. The third Azure service type is Azure queues. Now what is Azure queues? It is a cloud based messaging service. Now the moment you hear messaging service, not to be confused with emails and SMS. Do not think it is a SMS or emails. It is called the term is called messaging service. But again, you don't think of emails and SMS. So what is this messaging service means? Messages are essentially packets of data. What it is a messages means in this context, it is a packets of data sent between different parts of an application. So what is the meaning of different parts of an application? Let's see an example. For example, you are on a e-commerce website and imagine at this point, there are 10 customers who place the order at the same time. How many around the world The 10 customers in that particular second, the 10 customers who hit on the submit button and they submitted their order. So in the back end, what happens? Think like, even though they submitted at the same time, there could be milliseconds or some kind of difference. So what this will do, it is going to think like it's a orders are waiting in the line. So what would happen? All the order that placed just now or in the last 30 minutes or in the last one uh, 10 seconds in the last 60 seconds, whatever it is, right? So all the orders are queued in a line waiting in the line. Now these are what data packets. These are information behind this and they are just data, right? data packets are added in a queue and processed okay sorry for the spelling mistake but yeah so the data the orders are added in the queue and one after the other and then you see okay your order has got a tick mark for you it happens in matter of seconds but behind the scene this is what is happening okay so when it comes to azure queues what you should think it is a cloud-based messaging service and messaging service means what they are essentially packets of data clear now, each individual message can be up to 64 KB. This is a technical um, term that you remember. How, what is the size limitation? Can be up to 64 KB each packet. That means the data is divided into multiple packets. That is also possible. So the individual message can be up to 64 KB in size. The fourth storage service type is Azure Disks. Now, what are Azure Disks? They are same as like physical disks. Now think of your laptop or a desktop. You have a hard drive. It's more like that. But they are for use with Azure VMs or virtual machines. You know, this is the main part, right? The virtual machines from Azure. Now they need hard drives. So for that, it is used. Azure disk is used for virtual machines or VMs. The last storage service type is Azure tables. So what is Azure table? Azure tables are no SQL data store. What it is? No SQL data store. Now, what is the meaning of no SQL? No SQL stands for not only SQL. So, what is the? Let's understand little more detail. So, not only SQL meaning it can allow for flexible data storage. It is flexible in formats like documents, key value pairs, or graphs rather than rigid tables so sql you might have seen it's more like a table like like how you store data in your excel right it has columns it has rows and things like that so there is a predefined schema you define how many columns should be there you define how what should be the name of the columns so those are sql you know structure you, you have a proper structure of the data so here it is allowing you to flexible data storage flexible data different kinds of formats documents key value pair like json you might have seen graphs all these formats are allowed in the azure 
tables. Essentially, it means a database that can store data in ways other than the structured, other than the structured tabular format used by SQL databases. Okay, so that's about the Azure tables.